Hi everyone, my name is Erik Adler and today I'd like to talk about another book by Stephen R. Donaldson, namely The Runes of the Earth. This is the first volume in the Lost Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever, which means it's the seventh volume in this ten book series. And uh, as you can see it's a big book, uh, almost 600 pages long and there's also a lot of uh, text per page, so it took a while to read this one. Uh, it was an interesting read, and uh, what's, what's the story in there? Uh, this uh, story takes place 10 years after the events in the last vol volume in the series, White Gold Wielder. And uh, the main character in the book is not Thomas Covenant, it's Lyndon Avery. And uh, Lyndon Avery is now working at, at a psychiatric hospital, and one of her patients is Thomas Covenant's ex-wife, Joan. Commoner's son, Roger, has been possessed by Lord Fowl to do everything in his power to obtain the white gold wedding ring belonging to Joan. Commoner passed on his own ring to Lyndon Avery in the last volume in the series, which was White Gold Wheeler. Thomas Covenant was a novel writer, writing about guilt and power, we are told in this volume, uh, but we never learned what these books were exactly about and why Covenant wrote them, which is a pity. It would have been interesting to know what they were about, if it could have played a role also in the story, perhaps. Lyndon Avery is well described in the book. Uh, the part in Our World, which is the prologue, uh, consists of almost a hundred pages, so it's fairly long for a fantasy story. Uh, I think this is the best part. It's fast-paced, but it still offers good insights in Lyndon's emotional life. Lynn has changed since the last book, through her experiences in the land. She does not flee anymore within herself from her own darkness. Now she is a healer who has raised wild magic and made use of the magic staff of law. As a psychiatrist, she is aware of the fact that her transition to the land must be defined as an extended psychotic episode in psychiatric terms. But still, she does not doubt her experiences, which is a bit, little bit strange, perhaps. Uh, this is also what gave Covenant an uh, additional level of complexity in the first three books. It would have been interesting if Lynn Avery had, made, um, uh, had any thoughts about dream and reality. What is dream? What is reality? Am I dreaming? Is my waking life also a dream? And such questions, but she does not, unfortunately. Nevertheless, Donaldson makes a better job in describing Lyndon in this book than in earlier volumes, I think. You get the feeling that she's actually a woman, not a disguised man. For example, through her care for the old blind man, Anile, in the land. Like in earlier volumes, Donaldson switches between the personal and the authoritative perspective of storytelling. Most of the story is being told out of Lyndon's perspective, but now and again we suddenly jump to the perspective of others like that of Thomas Covenant's former lawyer, Megan Ryan, and then to an all-knowing perspective, disconnecting from the characters, which can be uh, slightly annoying when reading the book. Sometimes Donaldson also uh, is telling us things, like in earlier volumes, instead of letting us experience them. Uh, and I quote, Her own damaged childhood had taught her an intense empathy for children forced to pay the price of their parents' folly, we are told, for example. Time is treated fairly sloppy in the book, uh, according to my opinion. Uh, ten years ago, Lyndon met the old mysterious beggar who told her to be true. Now, ten years later, she thinks that this beggar should have warned her that her uh, adopted son, Jeremiah, that his life is at risk. And later in the land, people talk about things which happened 7,000 years ago, which feels very strange. Um, in a few situations, there's a lot of internal monologue also in the story, although Lyndon has to act quickly, which doesn't feel very realistic. She just simply doesn't have the time to think uh, as much as she is doing in a few of the more action-dominated uh, scenes. The text is somewhat repetitive, like early in earlier volumes as well. For example, we are told over and over again that Lyndon feels that she has failed her adopted son Jeremiah. And there is some info dumping uh, in the story, uh, mainly concerning the history of the land. 
Also, like in earlier books, uh, some of the dialogues feel too long and they not always drive the story forwards. And in, uh, like in earlier volumes also, there is no sexual tension whatsoever, which is very strange. Not even when the Harukai, who follows Linden, is carrying her up a, up a mountainside, there is no tension whatsoever, positive, negative, nothing at all. In this volume too, there are uh, a few reminiscences of Tolkien, especially in the magic ring hanging in a chain around Linden's neck, which of course um, uh, is very similar to uh, the, the, the image that we have of Frodo in, in The Lord of the Rings. I enjoyed the book, uh, especially the prologue in the US, uh, but also the episodes in the land, uh, until Linden and her comrades take off on their journey through time. They are traveling through time, and after that the story gets very strange and dreamlike, which I like dreamlike stories, but this is so strange and difficult to connect to, so it all turned into a very strange, almost a horror story. Uh, and the, the monsters who appear also felt fairly anonymous, so I wasn't really invested in that part. Uh, there are also two long episodes in the book where not very much happens throughout the story in the land, uh, because uh, there is too little conflict between the characters. I think that's the main problem in the story, that they are simply just friends and uh, fighting against external monsters who are anonymous and don't learn anything about these monsters, and within the group of humans uh, there is too little tension, so this, um, uh, the, the story of the humans is simply not interesting enough. Um, the existing conflict that is there between Linden and the Harukai uh, concerning safety and the question of self-responsibility could have been vastly expanded upon. It is there, but it has no real depth, I felt. It could have been much more philosophical, psychological and emotional as well. Generally, uh, I must say the book feels too long. It is a long book and it also feels long and a novel should not feel long, even if it is long. So I think uh, Donaldson should have shortened it um, and made it more uh, conflict-based. It would have uh, given us a more exciting uh, uh, story to read, simply. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, please uh, feel free to, to tell you, me in your comments below what you thought about this presentation, what you thought about the book if you read it. Feel free to of, course, to, of course, to subscribe to this channel, to give me a thumbs up if you like this presentation. And I'll talk to you soon again.